forever. Dog. They write, they talk, and talk about what they write. Tune in time to tonight, or whenever the time is right. It's the Writer's Panel with Ben Blacker, and it's starting now. Oh, yeah. You know, you he, you, uh, he doesn't know the ending. So he hasn't heard the whole thing. I so. haven't heard 10 either. I haven't either. After all that. Can you just. Dude, you gave it to me at like 10, 11 o'clock last night. Get the fuck out of here. I emailed it to you as soon as you texted me. Yeah, wasn't it at like 10 o'clock last night? Yeah, it's like 9 a.m. Yeah, whatever. Well, we won't spoil it anyway. This will be yeah, out we shouldn't spoil right it. before we should spoil season it. 10 comes out. Spoil it. Season 10. Season Episode 10. 10. Season, yeah, season 10. Oh, Same you, thing. Where were you for? Yeah. Cut to. Cut Listen, cut to we've already, coming out of her coma. We've already started. Ranger this is how line. podcasts go. Yeah, um, right. yeah, yeah. What I'm going to do is have you go around the table and introduce yourself so the listener knows what you sound like. Uh, and Oliver, let's start with you. Okay. Tell us what we're doing here. I don't know. Um, <laughs> this is your bright idea. <laughs> this was, yeah. Uh, I, oh, this was your idea. Mine. Now it's all I coming. have no now ideas. Now it's very clear. Uh, my name is Oliver Vaquer. I am the writer, co-creator, and co-star of uh, The Angel of Vine at 10 episode podcast, narrative podcast. Which is now all available. Well, all episode available. 10 will be out this week. Correct. Um, Correct. And people can get it for free at this point. 100% free. Um, but it's been out for, like it was on Stitcher first, right? Yeah, we released uh, ad free in, two, in an act one, act two format. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Through 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 the Stitcher folks, uh, but you can get it everywhere and anywhere. You now. can get anywhere, and every, yeah, everywhere uh, that you find your podcasts. Okay. And uh, if or you're, Oliver can just text you a link. One, oh yeah, or <laughs> that's what just, he yeah. does for us. Yeah, yeah. Or I can just text <laughs> you. Won't listen to and it anyway. You'll listen to it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Hi, I, I'm Alfred Molina. Uh, everybody calls me Fred. Uh, I play uh, Leonard Shaw. Uh, and I only pop in for, I think it's one episode. Two. You'd... Two episodes. <laughs> but we recorded it. I, I lost all track of time. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's it. That's me. That's you. Um, I'm Constance Zimmer. And I think I play Phyllis. I hope so. Is that my name? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I forgot it was so many characters that go. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and what else What else am I saying? That's, that's, that's good. It. We got and it. I, I, that's you. Um, we're actually all here in the same room. We're all in the same room. Yeah, well, this is something I'm curious about is mm-hmm. before we get into sort of where this all came from and mm-hmm. your process in creating the show, I'd like to hear, like, sort of jump ahead and talk about um, how it was recorded had you all met before? Did you sit in a room and do this? Like, what did this look like? How did well, you well, even get involved? Let's start well, with that. Yeah, Constance is looking at me, which means she can't, <laughs> which be, means she you can't talk. be bothered to answer the question. No, uh, yours is more interesting than no, mine. No, no. Uh, no we, it was, we recorded it pretty much like, a, like you would a radio play. I mean, I was in a room with Joe mm-hmm. to do uh, our scenes, uh, and I think other actors were in groups or one or in twos and threes cool. to, to do their stuff. But... Which is actually, which was actually very, very nice because it felt more like, you know, you could actually see the person you were acting with. So we there was some real kind of connection in terms of how we played the scene and so on. Mm-hmm. But very often it happens that you record on your own, right. and you know, which has its own sort of uh, its own conventions yeah. and its own kind of discipline. But I, I loved it, and, we, and Joe and I sat at either end of a longish table, a bit like this one, and we just looked at each other and just did it and, and it felt very um, you know uh, I try and avoid using this word I can't think of another one it just felt very organic you know it felt mm-hmm. very kind of natural to do it that way well I think it comes know. across in the show too that like there is there is a connection there is yeah. a humanity there you're and when, not you, and when you're with the, when, when you're with people in the room I think there's a, yeah. there's an energy that exists that yeah. wouldn't nor, would, perhaps wouldn't be there if you were on your own yeah I agree um, Constance how did you get involved in this I show? well Oliver Oliver. Your name is Oliver, right? I hope so. Um, (laughs) I mean, I got the, the, you know, reached out through uh, agents or whatever, right? And said, hey, do you want to do this podcast? And I was like, what's the podcast? You were Um, not. You know this stuff. No, of course. I I mean, I do, but I had never done one of these true crime, non-fiction. Fiction. 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 -fiction. Non-fiction. Fiction. Fiction. True crime. Audio drama. Yeah, that thing. Yeah. Um, and so I was fascinated by it, and uh, I was obviously, I mean, I was very excited. And so I actually, the day I recorded was the first day I met Oliver, mm-hmm. and then we did all of our stuff together, and it was just he and I, and I never met anybody else on the podcast. 
Because it's the first day I'm <laughs> right. meeting Fred, too. Yeah, no, no, no. When so. I specifically said to uh, my co-producer, Ryan, I said, I, I want Constance all to myself. Sure. And it's not creepy, I promise. <laughs> and we'll just go from there. It's a little creepy. It was totally creepy. Um, 100% But creepy. it also makes sense to the world that you've created. I mean, I think, you know, just to lay things out a little mm-hmm. bit, we're talking about a story that takes place in two different time periods. Mm-hmm. Um, three. Do you want, three, technically. Do you want to talk about it a little bit? Um, no. Yeah, He's like, I'm so uh, yeah, I'm tired no, 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 of talking no. um, about this show. Yeah, the, tr- the trickiest part about it is, is it takes place in three because you've got the past. You have the found tapes. It's found footage. Mm-hmm. So you have the tapes from the 1950s of this detective. You have the present with the podcast host, the fictional podcast oh, sure. host, a la Sarah Koenig, uh, who deals with the family members of the detective whose tapes they discovered. And then you have the future which is the fact that the host knows the outcome mm-hmm. but has to bury the lead in order to make it somewhat interesting. So So it's like a show within a show behind with. the scenes of the making of a show. <laughs> yeah. Pretty there much. you go. Um, That's it. How did this become the format for the story you wanted to tell? So, and what was the story you wanted to tell? Uh, I still don't know. Uh, no, my my partner Ryan actually approached me over a year ago, Ryan Martz, and he used to be my voiceover agent's assistant, oddly enough. And then he moved to New York and started working in promotion and, and endorsements, celebrity endorsements. And he was always a creative and he was a booth director and he wanted to be back doing this. Mm-hmm. And through all of the endorsements and the promotions, he learned about podcasting and, and or learned somewhat about it. Um, we're still all pretty new to this, but... Um, he came to me and he said, do you have any ideas? And I said, eh, ish, you know. And he had a grandfather who was a cop hmm. in, in, in Los Angeles who quit the force, who became a private eye and very oddly enough started recording himself, recording everything that he, wow. yeah, everything that he did, um, recording poems that he wrote, poets that he read. Uh, and then Ryan also loved the Black Dahlia. So he wanted to find a way to make the two work. And we talked about the style of it. And mm-hmm. I said, well, it's going to be a podcast, so we should do something that's familiar to your average podcast listener. Mm-hmm. And Serial was the blueprint right. because that was the easiest way to say, how are we hearing this? So that's believable. We have to have someone take us through. I didn't want to just, you know, hear the rain and then right. and then footsteps and hello, hello, hello. Living it in the way that there's the no context. contemporary I wanted did, to, I wanted yeah. to set up a context. Yeah. So... That was pretty much it. We actually had our cast before we had a finished script. Really? How did yep. that happen? Oh, because uh. none of us got to see the script. No one saw yeah. that, right? No one saw it. No one saw it until no. they came in. So, what did he took you, advantage of our yeah. ignorance. What did you think you were signing on 100%. to? <laughs> I thought it was a free lunch. <laughs> that wasn't that, even that. That's as far. That's as far you as got a free lunch. I, I, I did. You yeah, absolutely. In all fairness, I did get the free lunch. So all right, the, no complaints. I didn't get a free lunch. You I just got a bunch of M and M's. Ah. Uh, uh, <laughs> It shows. It shows in your performance. I, it does. I, actually, I just got M and M's and a bit of bacon. Oh, okay. So it wasn't that. <laughs> that's a kind that's of lunch. <laughs> that's lunch. That's LA lunch. Um, LA lunch. So, what was pitched to you both for Wait, what this thing that. was? I don't even know that. I, I if there do, were no scripts. No, I mean that was pretty that was much it. what I said. They right. were like, "Do you want to do this?" <laughs> The podcast, true crime, non-fiction, fiction, fiction <laughs> fucking thing. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm allowed to curse. Anyway, sorry. Um, and I, I don't know. I mean, I think for me uh, personally, I never see a reason not to do mm-hmm. podcasts because it's – feels very easy everything else feels so hard you have to decide (laughs) like do i want my face on that do what am i going to look like how much research do i have to do you know with podcasts you kind of show up and it becomes very organic and it's very in the moment and it's Hmm. and and you're just giving to it what exists on the page there's none of all that other kind of bullshit around it which i can say is a woman because there's a lot more involved Uh, taking a job, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, And so for me, I was excited just because I had never done one before. And the people involved, I thought, were pretty impressive. I mean, Alfred Molina, I was like, I don't even know if I'll see him, but if I can say, (laughs) hey, we'd work together, you'll never remember me. But um, no, I thought it was they had also gotten a really impressive 
cast yeah. at the time that you know I got the call, and so there really was no reason not to do it. Mm-hmm. What does um, for for you, Alfred? What does doing a show like this? How does it differ from you know stage work, screen work? television work you know you've done all of it for for all the reasons that Constance has just um, iterated I mean you know it's it's a lot easier you turn up you've just got to worry about you know the the pages are in front of you it's a very easy might not be quite the right word because it sounds as if it's kind of easy like you just kind of toss it off it's easy in the sense that all you've got all your focus is on this one thing you know as, as she said the script in front of you which is kind of really liberating in a way um but I uh, I I got interested because you know Oliver and I have been friends for a few years now, and and he he talked about this thing that he was working on, and I I think if I think I've got the chronology right, I was about to go to back to London to do the play, yeah, and so I was going to be away for like five months, and I said that's okay, I haven't written it yet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect timing, so I have three months, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but will you do it? And I said yeah, okay, yeah, but I can't do it until I get back. So and in fact, I think I. When I got back, I think it was within this first week or so that I was back. Which I was, you approved. I was in the studio, <laughs> you know, re- recording. And I think I was I – did we do – that was day one? Day of the, one. Yeah. Yeah, you and Joe were day one. But I just fell in love with the idea. Even though I hadn't seen a script, I fell in love with the whole notion of it being a true crime narrative mm-hmm. thing. And I love doing podcasts. Not that I've done many of them, to be honest, but I've, I've always enjoyed them. But the uh, the tone of this, you know, the the fact that it had all these kind of elements of noir and and uh, the Black Dahlia, all of that stuff, just gave it. It just felt good. It just felt interesting, you know. And then when when we got to read the scenes, I, I fell in love with it. And I and I and I think it, this is uh, it's like radio, you know. It's it's this magical sort of contract that you enter into as a as a listener. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're, it's, it's, you know, people use phrases like, you know, it's a movie between your ears or it's a theater of the mind. Whatever it is, it's very unique. It's mm-hmm. unique to you as you're listening to it. And, and, uh, and part of that is, that's part of the enjoyment of, d- of doing it. Yeah. And, but also just, just really good material. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm curious about that material. Mm-hmm. And Oliver, like, it seems like you knew who a lot of your cast were as you were writing. Yeah. Um, can you talk about how that helped? Um, part at times it didn't. Actually. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Writing for. Is he talking about us? Me. That's I interesting. Absolutely. I'm right here. I'm absolutely, right I'm absolutely <laughs> talking about. Uh, the take a break. You too. Yeah. Exactly. Should we leave the room? <laughs> actually, yeah, if you don't mind getting me that coffee, yeah, that'd be great. Um, I'm curious to hear about that. That's really interesting. Writing for Fred was the the most daunting part of the entire process Why? for me. Um, in fact, I still see it as a, almost a cold sweat moment, staring at the head of the dining room table with a laptop there, knowing that I had to dive in. Because as much as we're friends and shits and giggles and we, you know, we've known each other for quite some time, that doesn't change my level of respect for his artistry. Mm-hmm. And so you don't want to give someone shit material. You just don't. Like you don't want I, – I, I, I was – that was, you know – that was the moment for me. And I was yeah. like, you know what? Oh, yeah. I don't have a choice. We have a date we have to record. Right. I don't have a choice. And so that was basically it. I just dove in. Mm-hmm. I just dove in as far as Constance was concerned. He didn't give a rat's no. ass. <laughs> She'll do not, anything. Not at all. Yeah, yeah. Any yeah. piece of shit. <laughs> He's like, she can make. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. She'll say it. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be fine. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Beep, bloop, boop, beep, boop, boop, bleep. I noticed you cut out all my coffee lines, by the way. Yeah. I only all s- of them. So, yeah, so here's a cute So I couldn't so sell that. Moment. Clearly couldn't sell that. I have the, we'll see. I have the mega mix. I have the mega mix. Here we go. I have the mega mix. mega mix. So transitions, the transitions for this, because it was such a whirlwind process mm-hmm. writing this thing in three months, that every time I would go from the kitchen to segueing to one of the tapes, um, I always gave her this exit line of offering more coffee or offering if I wanted more pastry or did I want more. It was everything was just kitchen oriented. Mm. I was a nervous eater, apparently. And drinker. Yeah. I was drinking so much coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so nervous that you forced others to eat and drink in your presence. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we did, I didn't realize it until we got there to record record her stuff and the first one was fine and then all of a sudden she's like I'm I'm offering you more coffee (laughs) (laughs) all right okay 
more fucking coffee? And then it just became this ongoing joke. Oh, and so I have this mega mix of all of the, would you like some more coffees? Can I get you anything else? Would you like some more stuff? And then she ad-libbed and decided to go on and mention everything in the kitchen that she could possibly Perfect. offer me. So, um, <laughs> But there is something that happens, right? You... Many times as writers, we don't see these things until, until you're there. 100%. You're there. Yeah. Even in post, it was the same. Even in post, I found that there were lines that we didn't need. Mm -hmm. There was space that I could take based on our sound design, based on the performances, where I didn't need that extra line. It just wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. You could let it breathe. And that's a dangerous thing to do in radio. Dead air is a dangerous yeah. world. And so, but it worked. It worked. There are, and that's exactly how I wrote it. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, being an actor, what was great, uh, w the way I wrote this was I sat down and I wrote it and then I read it out loud. Mm -hmm. I read it for rhythm. I read it for performance. I read it for just, just to hear it. How it, many pages was it? It's just shy of 240, the whole wow. thing. Yeah, just shy of 240. I'm, I'm curious to hear about wrangling that story. Mysteries are hard. Yes. Um, so what did it look, what did the breaking process look like? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my breaking process was with Ryan, well, to create a divot in the floor from pacing in the <laughs> living room. My, it got to the point where my wife would, my wife would walk in at any given moment. She would walk in and, and she would know who I was on the phone with. Like there was no one else. It was just me and Ryan. <laughs> yeah. And we were outlining every single beat of it as much as we could. Mm -hmm. Only because the audiences are so smart. So smart. Uh, that I knew I wasn't gonna. I didn't want to trick anybody. Mm -hmm. Like that's the that's the thing about a mystery. Like if I'm trying to make right. sure you don't. Audiences are too smart. Yeah. They want to figure it out. So I went with that. Mm -hmm. I just rolled with it. I was like, let them try. Great. And then the test for me was knowing that Ryan knew the ending. If I could find a way to surprise him, <laughs> then we had the ending. We had it. And it came to me one day, and I picked up the phone, and I said, I got it. And I told him, and he went. What? And I went, cool, now I gotta write it. <laughs> Hung up on him, and that was it. Um, and even now, you know, ideas come up for where we can go with this, mm -hmm. and, you know, what's next. And, and I sent Joe Manganello a text over the holidays just as I was starting to outline season two, and I was like, where do you wanna go? <laughs> What do you want to do? Well, sure, sure. Now you have oh, so all Joe's of these. Got a gig. What <laughs> about yeah. Constance and me then? Yeah, by the way. <laughs> We're going to wow. see how this goes. God. How this today how goes. This today yeah, goes. Joe, Joe doesn't need the money. Let's face it. <laughs> Come on. You That's know. true. I mean. I, I just picked you up at home. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been to your home. You're okay. You're okay. I had ramen for breakfast. Let's move on. <laughs> and you live here, right? In the studio. In the studio. In the studio. <laughs> <laughs> I live right behind that closed door. I mean, there is something to, you now have all of these collaborators who are invested, theoretically invested in this world. Um, theoretically, how do you? Once we, once the only bummer is Fred's right. from like the '40s. He's like, you know. Well, that's my question, right? Yeah. How do you? His how do you move forward? Not you personally, I know, no, but I, no, your I, underst I understood. I understood. <laughs> <laughs> You looked at me like, yeah. how old do you think I am? <laughs> she said in his 40s. That's right, that's right, that's right. Fred's in his 40s. That's right. Yes, he is. Um, oh, that's you know, a real compliment. Thank you. <laughs> how do you move forward and not repeat yourself? How do you keep working with these people? Well, the first thing you do is you don't with? worry about repeating yourself. Okay. I can't worry about repeating because that's that will that will completely stymie my the, the process of, of diving in. Mm -hmm. um, but actually, Fred and I were talking about it this morning, and each character that exists, at least most of them, can still be a part of this world mm -hmm. that we've created. No question. There are numerous reasons why any of them uh, can be brought back for information's sake. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? You know, where, like, like I said to Joe, where do you want to go next? What do you, what do you think is interesting? I, I, and I would ask that of anyone who wants to go on a journey of, uh, you know, for another season of this. Like, what do you think is cool? Sure. What do you want to do? That's the beautiful thing about working with people and working with them so closely and having a no asshole policy is that I can reach out to these folks and be like, hey, I'm thinking about this. What do you think is cool? What do you think is interesting? Right. You know, and Fred was giving me some ideas earlier, uh, just some some resources to kind of look into, and I will absolutely dive in and and see what you know what works and what doesn't. We can and also totally change our voices and be different. I have told you no. 
I, I have told you no. Is that true? That's the other mega mix. The other mega mix is the day. It's all my accents. I was like, wait, I could be this character. Yeah. <laughs> ah, it's the creeping kid. Yeah, it's that whole like Eddie is our. Because when I first showed up, I was like, am I doing this in my voice? Like, I don't know anything about this character, or this show, or what I'm doing. Am I doing it in my voice, or I'm going to be German, or what am I going to be? Right. And I was like, yeah, we're definitely not doing that. He's like, Lord. he's like, no, just your just voice. You. I'm like, oh. Oh, that's oh. boring. That's, yeah, totally. So we were done in 22 <laughs> minutes, and then for two and a half hours, we laughed our asses sure. off. Basically, that's how well, that Well, that's the best case scenario for Best case like scenario, this, right? Well, she was the only person I was actually nervous about. Which Why? is weird. Because she was the person I pitched. She was my 100% choice. She's who I wanted for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you were, I'm glad you were available, Fred. But she <laughs> he was, was nervous because he pitched she, me so hard he was afraid I could, wouldn't, wouldn't work. Also true. But <laughs> it didn't matter at that point. We were already in. We were already in. Um... No, but, you know, one of the things that is said very early on uh, in The Angel of Vine is that Oscar has only listened to The Angel of Vine tapes. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of boxes Hmm. of tapes that Hank recorded. So we can go anywhere. We can go anywhere. That's a fun idea. We can go anywhere. Interesting. Um, Yeah, uh, that's very We can go to Hawaii. You should can definitely we, record this on location. Record one, I just got back, but let's go. Let's go. You want to go they've, got, they've, got this great, they've got this great microphone now Could you yeah. imagine? that you can record on the beach in Maui, yeah. very close to the Four Seasons Hotel. That's right. And you, and you, can't, you can't hear the surf. You can't hear the ocean. Perfect. It's brilliant. Great little microphone. It's really good. Meanwhile, Ryan's listening to this at home having a heart attack <laughs> because of the budget. Um, <laughs> oh, it pays for itself. Oh, sure it is. With this I, microphone? I think that that yeah, would this be, mi- yeah, this microphone. I think that that would be your ass is local. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. Done. <laughs> But I think it would be amazing to say, well, yeah, I chose the podcast based on location. <laughs> right. I've always wanted That's to really go good. to Bali. Right. 100%. And Why they're not? recording in Bali. We, we need to do to. research. Um, I want to ask. We need real monkeys in the background. I want to ask uh, a sort of nuts and bolts question that would be helpful to our listeners who are mostly Mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> um, as actors, uh, what is helpful to you? In a script, like how can a writer best write for an actor? Mm. What do you respond to? What gets you excited? I Connie again. In, yeah, oh. and in a practical sense, like Uh-oh. what is actually helpful? Oh, it's been how long? How long did it take? <laughs> um, as soon as you call him forty. That's right. That's right. Um, I mean, obviously, just speaking for me personally, uh, it's all about the character that I'm going to be playing. That's obviously what I always look at first because that's what I'm responsible for as the person playing the part. So it could be an incredible project, but the actual part that I'm playing in it, it, you know, could not be as good as the overall picture. And so that's not something I would want to commit to doing the work, but If the character is amazing and I know that I can make it whatever I want to try and make it, then I feel like the overall picture can be helped, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, It it makes me feel a little bit more in control because as actors, we are normally not in control. So for me, it's all about my character. It's just a super selfish and then I will go and I will read the the rest of the script and see how it interacts and how it becomes a part of it and mm-hmm. <clears throat> or not. But I, I don't know. I mean, for me, it's specificity, it's detail, it's uh, strength of character, it's uh, the moments where there isn't dialogue. I really appreciate a lot because sometimes things are so overwritten that there is no space Mm -hmm. to exist in the character without talking. Um, I look for those kinds of things where I can add to it without saying anything. That's an interesting thing. I mean, you've played so many hyper-verbal characters. Like, you're so good at that. That, seriously, that, like, for you to look for the thing that might challenge you or that might not be the thing that maybe comes easily to you 
makes a lot of sense. And it, it feels like that's where a writer could be serving an actor. Like, look for the thing that maybe they want to do that they don't always get to do. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I mean, Alfred, you're, you're nodding. Is this your experience? No, well? I'm, not, I'm nodding because uh, you're, bo- <laughs> you're both making absolute sense. Uh, and I think it's also to do with what I, what I always like, look, like to find when I'm reading a script is, is, to, is to look what the character does as much as what he says. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, like Constance says, there's, there's, there are things going on in the moments when you're not talking. You know, you can, if 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 what you're doing is is interesting and and has some, you know, has some kind of value and, and is intriguing in some way, um, I think that's that that's the thing that always make gets me sort of interested. Um, it's not so much you know how much he says or how how big this how, how many scenes have I got or anything like that. I think there's a Obviously, you know, it's, it, if, if you're going to be busy, that's great, you know. Um, but uh, it's it as much as what the what the character does, what the character is responsible for, what sort of impact the character is having hmm. on the story, you know. Um, and and uh, but but it, but again, it's it's a movable feast. I mean, you I mean, I've I've read scripts where, you know, the character's got like literally one scene, one shot, but then you kind of go. Oh yeah, I've got to do that. Oh, like, <laughs> this, like this, is this is going to be exactly a lot of like fun. Vice. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, or, or it could be something. Or, or it could be that the, the character doesn't do very much, but then suddenly, uh, five episodes in, something extraordinary happens. Mm-hmm. You know, and that so it it, it, cha- it changes depending, I think, on. And also the other. I mean, I don't know. if I'm sure Constance would agree. I may, actually, I don't know whether you might or not. But I think a lot of it's to do with who else is involved. Mm-hmm. You know, and and what kind of what sort of uh, what sort of group you're going to be involved in in with you know for a certain amount of time. Sure. You know, and I never appreciated that when I was a younger actor. When I was very young, I I just leapt at everything because that's what I, I, I thought I was supposed to do, and I ended up kind of doing stuff that really had no gave me nothing. You know, I. Hmm. But I'm a bit more. Uh, I'm a bit wiser now as to the fact that you're going to spend all day for several days with the same people and you just you know you want to be in a you want to be in a nice place you want to be somewhere there where there's going to be support and encouragement and camaraderie yeah well there is something i mean actors have similar to writers where at the beginning of our careers we do say yes to everything Mm -hmm. right yeah because you don't have a choice right absolutely so i'm still there i'm still there still there as an actor i was like you also say (laughs) yes to like every single party that you've ever like (laughs) you go to everything because you're like hi hi i'm here sure hi hi i wrote this so i could act with the people i wanted to that's basically how this all game about it's all selfish and nonsense well i I mean it also has even just hearing you all today it has this great sort of like let's put on a show quality Mm -hmm. right that you don't get in every sort of work Mm -hmm. situation Mm -hmm. well ideally that spirit that kind of excitement and Mm -hmm. that willingness to jump in you know to take it that leap of faith i mean hopefully that stays alive and stays with you until until you really kind of you know literally pop your clogs i mean i i I think that would that would i think that would be a sad thing to lose that Mm -hmm. and i i i I, I still feel that now i still get excited at the prospect of something Mm. Uh, i'm curious to hear um oliver Mm -hmm. about you know you have done so much work as a voice actor and what kind of an advantage if at all that gave you in writing is that true none yeah because my experience for the most part in voiceover actually was 10, 11, 12 years of commercial voiceover in New mm-hmm. York for the most part. Yeah, and that's a different thing. once I got out to Los Angeles, actually, I did a few video games uh, in New York for Rockstar through Bernie Telsey's office and then ended up on Broadway and talk radio hmm. because of that, because they were casting the revival and they needed guys who could do voices for the callers. And so uh, that happened. But again, that was... It's acting like anything else, you know. That that's just that's just how it is. It's there was no there was no mic technique. In fact, I told everybody who sat down in front of the mic, "Don't be married to the mic." Mm-hmm. That's not you know this 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 detective has a plant on him. If if there's someone over there, yell over there. Right. We need it for the realism. Right. I don't I don't want everyone to be on mic and measuring where they're you know. Hi, how are you? It's just it's, it wasn't necessary, right. and, it, and it kills the realism. By the way, that's the difference between doing it the way we did it, and wild lining and picking everything up, and everybody doing three in a row. Mm-hmm. Do it three different ways. Like I didn't. Yeah, it it really didn't help. Yeah. Now post is where all of that really helped. How so? 
being able to read waveforms when we were building, um, just being so used to from all of the uh, voiceover auditions that I have to do at home and have been doing just for over a decade, being able to read waveforms, edit quickly, know where the breaths are, know where the hiccups are to you know mm-hmm. guide the engineer. Um, and then just just being really aware of everything auditory so that we knew once the build was done how I was going to be able to communicate with Joel Robbie, who's our phenomenal, phenomenal sound designer. Mm-hmm. Like, I cannot give this guy enough credit, and I want to give him a raise on the next one <laughs> because he's just – yeah, he's priceless. His work is incredible. He's just how, so good. How much of that – because it is – like, it's sound design. It's crazy. Like, crazy. Uh, how much of that was built into the script? How much of it was – Almost all of you it. Know, Almost all of it. How so? What did that look like? Uh, instead of the action, it was action by way of sound design. It was by way of sound effect. So mm-hmm. you're writing it the same way. Mm-hmm. Well, I still have to envision the entire uh, the, the room and where everyone is and proximity, but I also have to see everything on the desk and what's inside mm-hmm. the drawer. When is the moment to pull the drawer? When do we close it? So all of that is written in as action to guide sure. the sound designer. And then there was a moment, because I, I trusted him so much. I went up to San Francisco to sit with him after he mixed episode one. And we just developed this relationship where I would just, I trusted him because he was just so good. He was so good. The things that he would do, he would pull up a room on his, there's this diagram on his screen in front of his mixing board. And it's a room. And then you see the two sound files, and they're talking to each other. And he throws a wall into the graphic, and the sound goes around the wall. And then he <laughs> wow. lowers the ceiling, and then he, and it, it was the most incredible That's thing. So neat. And I was like, "You don't need me. You're yeah. cool." And <laughs> and uh, I would just tell him to Robbie it. I'd be like, "Cool. Let awesome. me hear the first one. <laughs> let me go through it." I was really just there for pacing. Mm-hmm. That was it. I was really there for pacing. I was like, "You can let this hang." Episode eight. Uh, is all about the sound. I told hmm. him that when I hired him. This is the beast because oh, it's all sound design. Um, and I told him, I said, don't be afraid to really, really get in there and just, it can, it can take a while. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Trust it. Just trust it. Mm-hmm. If, it's, if it's too long, I'll tell you. But give me more rather than less. He was so he was so good. That's I just really didn't have cool. to tell him anything after a while. He was just so good. What were the challenges specific to this show? Hmm. I gotta say there weren't a lot. There really weren't. Must it be was tough. it was a yeah. I know. I know. I know. It's it's. I, I wish that I could say. You that, know, I did a radio program for eleven years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was um, never easy. There were every hiccup turned into something we would call kismet. Mm-hmm. We just learned That's how great. to let things roll. Like and what? Like what? Do you have an example? Like, yeah, we had hired this actor, Constance Simmer. Oh, boy. Here it goes. <laughs> and she, um, Sometimes you got to work around the weak links. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we had an actor who will remain nameless cancel three hours before their session time. Mm-hmm. And kind of express that they just, uh, they, you can uh, you can replace me was kind of what they what they communicated through yeah. their agent, and I get it. Stuff comes up. It it is what it is. It's not a big deal. Right. Um, we found not three hours before your <laughs> yeah. appointment. It doesn't. I'm being incredibly <laughs> diplomatic. That's I'm right. Not established like you. Um, <laughs> But this is part of producing a thing for yes. sure. 100%. Like this happens 100%. and it sucks, but you have to move so on. So we found a way to use the three hours uh, of studio time because we had already oh, paid good. for it. Yeah. Um, and then in the 11th hour, an actor came in who will also remain nameless, only because it'll then tip off who I'm talking about. If <laughs> um, And that actor blew the roof off the place. Like gave a performance wow. that... I, I didn't even hear it that good when I wrote it. Mm-hmm. It was just so good. It was so good. He was just, it, it wasn't you. He's not well, it clearly us. wasn't us. It wasn't no, us. It was neither one of you. Because no. um, it's never, never but, yeah. referred to is that, is that, that Is that what's known as a backhanded compliment? <laughs> is that what? No, no I just, just don't it's even, an insult. It's, it's just an problem. insult. Just an insult. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing. Nowhere. We're not even a part of the conversation. <laughs> That's it. I knew, I knew damn well that I all I was going to have to do was put the material in front of these two and not worry. There, about and them. there is that. You don't. Right? There was no. Like, that's the beautiful thing about 
having a voice in, in, in your head that you can really hear and mm-hmm. more so for you, for you a little bit, but you know, I don't, I obviously don't know you as a megalomaniacal prick. So, you know, I wanted to give you something meaty and fun and that mm-hmm. was, yeah, weird. but you did say when you gave me the script, you did say this won't be too much of a stretch for you, Fred. Right. <laughs> but you don't have to say those things in public. Um, <laughs> you can just, it's your rep. I don't care. I mean, um, <laughs> people know. People know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People I mean, know. he might be trying to mix it up a little. <laughs> <Yeah>. you <know? laughs> Why not? Uh, right. That's our jobs. Yeah. <laughs> but there is, I mean, like, for the same reasons you were saying, like you have to write to deserve the talent you have. Like when you have people like this, you know, you're going to get something special. Absolutely. You know they're going to add something to it that you didn't expect. Yeah. Um, and, and the opposite can happen, right? Is you may have a part that you don't expect very much from, and then you get a great actor yeah. who brings so much to mm-hmm. it. Um, it can be so satisfying. Yeah. One hundred. Well, yeah. And, and I, you know, in any situation like this, I love to be surprised. Not because I think I, I know anything. I never want to be the smartest person in the room, ever. Uh, don't worry. That, <laughs> 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 Thank God you said it. <laughs> Whew, now I can take a, I can take a, I can take a rest now. Thank God. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. Right. Don't funny. be sorry. It's fantastic. It's um, I, I have never been the smartest person in the room, um, and and I'm okay with that. I I I want to learn from everyone. It's you know, it's part of the reason why this whole thing has been a crazy kind of dream come true. Getting to work with all of these people who. As an actor in front of the camera who's doing a few recurring and day player to build a resume, you just don't get that opportunity every so often. Yet on this one project in the course of seven days, I got to work with a whole bunch of great people and um, learn from them. You know, really, really learn from everything they're doing. Like I said, it wasn't about voiceover technique. It wasn't about, you know, I can do a video game, therefore I can. I mean, it it was about getting to be opposite actors and just doing Mm -hmm. what we love. I think you need to tell everybody right now, though, Hmm. the person you learned the most (laughs) from. Probably your daughter, Coco. My daughter's on the uh, is in the show. Yes, she is. What do you mean, huh? I thought you said you listened to nine episodes. No, I did. No, so but why I'm are you saying, shrugging? I shrugged because I didn't know if it's called the show or if it's called the podcast <laughs> or it's called both. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I love it. And that's why I love <laughs> no, you, No, that's why I brought that. 100% no, why I love No, my, you. so, because uh, to another. Let me set it up and then it. you can Thank go you. on. Thank you. So the day she comes in, she's okay. like, so I noticed that there's a young Phyllis, do you want me to do that too? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. I was like, because I can raise you my voice amazing. really high. And this, right, right. And, right. Then, and then this is where we went into the cavalcade of, of, of right. accents and voices right. that, that, that I could play all the parts. I could be everybody. Um, I almost let her. Yeah. It was fine. I would have let her do anything at that point. Except for that. Yeah. Except for, <laughs> except for the young boys. Right. And, so, and she said, uh, she was like, well, you know, my daughter, Coco. And I'm without missing a beat. I was apps done. She's hired. 100 percent So great. Really more so because I wanted to see her house. But <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, I said absolutely 100 percent She's hired, done, awesome. We'll figure it out for next weekend, whatever. In that in that moment, I also unfortunately fired Ryan's niece, who had already recorded it. Oh, but geez. you know, like I said, I wanted to see where she lived. But that's um, the biz. That's acting. That's exactly. The, that happens in the biz. <laughs> Yeah, that's the biz. She's yeah. got to learn. That's right. <laughs> She's got to learn. You get back up. You get back up. You want to do this? Six is not oh, too you young thought because you were related to the producer, this was going to be okay? Sit down. Oh, no, you're already down. Stay down. So anyway, so I go over to your place and... Yeah. How well, old is your daughter? Uh, she just turned 11. Okay. So she was 10 at the time. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah, and it it was so funny because Oliver was like, uh, "Where do you want to record this? Where are you most comfortable?" And she's like, "In my room." He's okay. Can we sit on my bed and do it? <laughs> I was like, "Okay." And it was so cute because it was just the idea of her like recording, doing this job. She's like sitting on her bed, laptop open. Oliver's like <laughs> directing so her a little bit here and there, and um, it was very sweet. I mean, she's she actually weirdly enough has like now uh, SAG wants to Taft Hartley her, not because of this, of course not, but because of these other random oh like God. voiceover jobs that she's gotten through friends, like hasn't even been trying, and now she said, "Oh my God." my dreams are coming true I'm gonna become a voiceover actor and I said yes I mean it's crazy that you were Taft Hartley 
years before I was. <laughs> and I was like trying to be an actor right. and it's just getting handed to her. I was it's like, a valuable oh. lesson for young actors for out there. Who? I was like, valuable don't try. lesson. Yeah, don't try. Just do. Don't try. Yeah. I think that's great. It's pretty I funny. It's great. I appreciate I that, that you said not because of this show, so you don't have to pay me a finder's fee. I yeah. appreciate that. That's, <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah, that's I get right. no percentage of it. No, but uh, it's... Let me wrap up by asking you all, um, do you listen to podcasts? I, and I, what are you I, listening to? I've, I've started to listen. Um, I, I'm a bit late to the, uh, to the, to the game. Um, but I, but I, the, the thing that got me first uh, into it was um, – uh, Miss Longworth's Karina podcast. Longworth. Oh, um, I must remember you, know, you must remember this because I was doing some. Um, I was doing some research. You know, I'm. I'm uh, not that I do very much research when I'm acting, but I, I had to do. You know, I was playing a, a real life ca- character that actually existed, so I was trying to do some research into them and the world that he inhabited. And somebody pointed me in the direction of these podcasts. You must remember this, and I got completely into it. And, yeah. and uh, I, I, what? But, but I'm still trying to work out what makes it so different from listening to a radio show. And I think part of it is the mobility of it, mm-hmm. the choice that you can listen to it whenever you want. You're not sure. tied to a place or a moment or a time. But also, there's something about there's a freedom in it that. Very often, radio doesn't have, you know, especially uh, if you're if if it's if you're working for a corporation, mm-hmm. these you know podcasts are, are are kind of they're intimate and they're independent. It could be it could be just someone who just wants to do yeah. one in his or her front room, you know. Um, so that's th- there's a kind of intimacy and a kind of connection to it that I like, um, and I, I listen to that and I listen to a lot of uh, historical and you know kind of factual stuff. You know, mm-hmm. I haven't quite got into. Many dramas or, you know, things like that. It still feels new. Yeah. I mean, as I said, like we were doing Thrilling Adventure Hour for 10 years, mm-hmm. but that was a different animal mm-hmm. um, because it was also a stage show. But the narrative scripted show still feels very new. And mm-hmm. it feels like, you know, every every one that comes out, Angel of Vine included, sort of pushes that format forward mm-hmm. a little bit. But it seems to be blossoming exponentially. Yeah. I mean, see, there seems to be so much content now. Yeah. So much more than there was, you know, sort of four or five years ago. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Constance, do you listen to podcasts? I, I do, um, but I listen to more like... Only the ones she's on. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Only the ones her daughter's on. <laughs> Which is incredibly limiting. Um, no, but I listen to more like... I listen to Oprah, mm-hmm. Super Soul mm-hmm. Sunday, and I listen to What's the Tea with RuPaul, of course, and Michelle Visage. <laughs> um, and I did happen to be on that one. But I do also listen to the ones that I'm not on. Um, uh, a friend of mine had a podcast called Conversations with Others, uh, which I listened to. And now I'm I'm like in the process of maybe having my own podcast. Wow. So I've been listening more now to ones that would be like what I would do and make sure that I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I this week? What? With Constance Zimmer. <laughs> I'm going to play a different character <laughs> every <laughs> week. <laughs> It'll be like Tracy Ullman, but not. 100%. <laughs> Today we are making bread. <laughs> fewer, right. fewer wigs. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So I'm like slowly kind sure. of dabbling in it and listening to the ones that, you know, are interesting to – uh, my have you got an idea what sort of crafting? what sort of theme it's going to have or anything like that? Yes, I do, and it would be um, not just myself. It would be me and uh, Missy Pyle. Great, who I think nice. you guys yes, both know. 100%. Yeah, because we're very good friends, and we've been friends for over fifteen years. And whenever her and I are together, it's always like, "What? Why don't we have a show?" <laughs> Nobody would ever cast <laughs> us on camera together. I don't know why. Because she's like seven feet and I'm like five feet. There's a show right there. Get, that's there right. <laughs> um, but yeah, we do. We have an idea. We have a concept. We've already done a, a pilot. Awesome. Fun. And now we're just trying to see if I we think it. it's going to work. We've so. already subscribed. But no we'll one can see our we'll crafting. See. <laughs> no, it's not about crafting. Knitting with Constance no. and Missy. <laughs> <laughs> Knitting makes for great podcast. <laughs> great audio. <laughs> Just put it in later. That's right. That's right. Uh, Oliver, what are you listening to these days? Whoa. What am I listening to these days? Um, I've been listening to, I'm going to get all the names wrong, Big Loop, right? Dark Tapes. Is that right? If I'm not getting them wrong, Brett, throw something at me. Um, 
Thrilling Adventure Hour. I actually listened to a bunch of because I wasn't I a pop. You. I, 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 no, no. I, I, I listened. I, I, I queued up a bunch of for the holidays because I have to admit I, I hadn't listened to any. You're right over there, Constance? sorry, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> cool. I'm trying to distract. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. That's cool. No, you didn't. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what I was saying. Oh, <laughs> uh, I hadn't really listened to a lot of podcasts prior to this experience. I had listened to Serial. I had listened to S Town. Um, I had listened to True Crime. That was it. Every once in my oh, wife is a huge podcast listener because mm-hmm. her commute sucks. Sure. So she would always say, oh, you got to listen to this. You got to listen to that. Um, but because I now find myself in the narrative space of podcasting, I thought maybe I should. It's weird doing homework after the fact, but I think just sure. as important, not to mention yeah, the fact yeah. that there are an incredible amount of collaborators out there um, who I would love to work with. I think that there are people in the space who are just doing such an incredible job of keeping it going and finding new ways to tell stories. I had someone reach out from, uh, I'm not even going to remember their name, but they reached out from London and uh, they have, they, they just did a, I think they did Macbeth in, oh, a, in a castle and they recorded it. Wow. Yeah. They Amazing. Were, I mean, just the, cool. the things that people are doing. So see, we can actually go on location. Oh my God. <laughs> see? You can't huh? fake that castle feel. No. Uh, I will say, and you know, our, you can't fake that our castle recent feel. experience with Thrilling Adventure Hour and for another that project like an we're doing, soap. That's so good. There's something very satisfying about the, about having a writer's room for even this format mm. of thing and like not, taking it on yourself and you get these in the same way when you give a great actor something and you get surprised by it you get that from writers who are tackling your you know your foundation Mm -hmm. as well and that's Um, why the most fun the the most fun was when I was finally we were finally in the studio and and I was working with other people because Like being a voiceover announcer for so many years, you're alone in a booth, and then Absolutely. writing this thing, I was alone in my house, and I'm, you know, I don't need to be alone <laughs> yeah. anymore. I just don't. It's been a long 41 <laughs> years of loneliness. I'm ready to be with people. I'm ready to be with people. Um, well, it yeah. came out great. Uh, congratulations Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, to all of you on Angel of Vine. Uh, they're all available with episode 10 coming this week. Get them uh, wherever you get your podcast. Thank you all for being here. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, man. It's fun. Forever. Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Dog. Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original Dog. podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe Dog. to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your Dog. podcasts. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter Dog. and Instagram at Forever Dog Team and liking our page on Facebook.